Thank you, Mark. This month, Bill Harris dives into an important series of topics focusing on the five basic emotional struggles of mankind. That's pride, fear, anger, inferiority, and loneliness. Well, Bill, we've been so excited to have you back in our studios for a new teaching series. You're talking about the five basic emotional struggles of mankind. Uh, let's dive into this a little bit. Well, you know, I first got onto this through a very dear friend of mine, De uh, Dr. Les Carter, who is a psychologist, a Christian psychologist, mm. uh, for the former Minareth Meyer Clinic, which was headquartered in uh, the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, I attended a, a seminar that he did on this subject, and he has given me permission to, to teach on this, uh -huh. and I enjoy it. It's, it's so relevant to human behavior. Yeah, and so we've talked, we mentioned the five, of course, there are a lot of emotions we struggle with, uh -huh. but the five specifically that you discussed, okay. the, the anger, pride, inferiority, uh, loneliness, and... Well, let me start from the top, that way okay. I won't forget them. Uh, the first one is pride, that's the center one, because uh, man in his sin, sinful state, is basically self-centered. The antidote to pride is selflessness. Hmm. Uh, the second one would be fear, and the antidote to fear uh, would be to trust in God. The third one uh, is loneliness. The antidote to that is fellowship hmm. with God and with your fellow man, yeah. so vertical and horizontal. The fourth one is inferiority, and the antidote to inferiority, the inferior feelings that man has about himself, is God-given value. We get our value from him, not, not mm. in the things we possess and the like. The fifth is anger, hmm. and the antidote to that is kind-heartedness. And there's scriptural basis for these, all coming out of the Garden of Eden, essentially. Yeah. Okay, well, you, you kind of briefly mentioned there, you mentioned an antidote yeah. for each of these struggles. And that's kind of how you, you set up your, your five teachings, isn't yeah. it? That there's an antidote provided for all of these through Jesus and through God. Exactly, because I think that if you're going to teach on these emotional struggles, you, you, you've got to offer hope at the same time. <laughs> right, right. You know, and so in the Garden of Eden, when we're dealing with pride, uh, what happened is Adam and Eve looked to become independent from God uh. Uh, by virtue of the program that, that the serpent presented in the Garden of Eden to pull away from God and become independent. And that caused them to lift themselves up in, in pride. And then the, the antidote was, is selflessness, where God is saying that you prefer your brother rather than yourself. Okay. That's so, for the first one at least. Yeah, so let's dive in a little deeper into the pride element, something mm -hmm. that uh, C.S. Lewis had called the greatest sin, or really the culmination yeah. of all sins. It is. Is the point, which is pride. Because, and I draw an illustration of a little stick man, and I have arrows pointing inward <laughs> toward himself, because self-centeredness is at the core of pride. Yeah. It, it's all about me, 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 you know, me first, everybody else later. And I, I tell people it's almost like that, um, that radio station, WIIFM, what's in it for me? Uh, that, <laughs> that's where the selfishness right. of the pride uh -huh. comes in. And so it's difficult to shed ourselves of selfish pride by way of the flesh, because flesh wants you and me to do that which is against God's will, hmm. whether it's in our body and the five senses we have to satisfy those desires, or if it's the mind, will, and emotion through the soul to get us to think differently than the way God wants us to do, to act differently with our selfish will or with our emotions, uh, where the devil tries to manipulate our emotions as he, as he did with Eve in the mm -hmm. garden, uh, to try to get us to, to act out our emotions uh, in an ungodly way. Well, there's one interesting thing about pride for me in particular, which is we all have struggled with it at, at some point. Sure. And and pride is something it's almost difficult if you're if you're very prideful, it's almost difficult to identify the pride that you have going on. So is there a way that we can uh, that maybe is some pointers that we know that pride is an issue? I think it's so it is so subtle in some cases. You can have the most humble little grandmother, you know, <laughs> I could use that as an example, uh -huh. who still may have an element of pride, but if it seeks to satisfy itself hmm. apart from God, that would be, I think, a basic criterion. Yeah. Uh, if it seeks to satisfy itself apart from God. And, and that's what it does. We're all creatures of pleasures. Psalms, uh, I can't think of the chapter and verse right now, but where God talks about uh, he has pleasures for us forevermore. Mm -hmm. So we're creatures of pleasure. The, the, the devil tries to exploit it in, in seeking out the pleasures outside of God, uh, rather in his holiness. Yeah. See? So let's offer a little bit of hope, like you mentioned, the antidote. Selflessness. Yeah. Selflessness. Putting others before us. And that 
To do that, it means we have to mortify the flesh. You know, the Bible talks about we have to pick up our cross daily and follow him. That means we've got to crucify our selfish, prideful desires, prefer others before us. It takes discipline for us to give ourselves over to God because God won't force us with that. Just a reminder that you can hear more about this topic right here on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9 a.m.